welcome to On the Patio with Mr. D and Bob. We're going to be doing a whole slew of reviews on products out here on the patio. And this is just to give you some information on these particular items, how they work, if they don't work, all that kind of stuff like that. And uh, after each video down in the comment block, you'll see a link to where the purchase was taking place. And also at the end, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. So sit back, enjoy. We'll see you in a couple minutes. And welcome to On the Patio with Mr. D. Hey, we got something that's really, really cool. We're going to do a bridge camera shootout between six different cameras and see which dog is going to hunt. Now, in those, I got several different models that I'm going to be doing. So what I'm going to do is, so I don't mess it up, I'm going to read them off of the cameras that we'll be testing over the next couple weeks. Now, one is the Nikon B700, the Canon SX5 30, the Lumix FZ1000, the Canon SX60, the Sony HX400V, and finally, dun, 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 the Zoom Killer, Nikon P900. Now this bad boy is supposed to reach out 2,000 millimeters. I don't know. I don't know what the image quality is going to be, but hey, we're going to check it out and do our thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out to a wildlife preserve and take all these cameras out here and we're going to go out uh, and check them all out all at the same time in some cases. Other times we're going to take one at a time uh, out on my kayaks and uh, test them out on the kayak and see how they do for movement and, and all that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is we're going to be checking out the video quality, the image quality, saturation, um, focal lengths, and basically stuff like that. Only in a landscaping wildlife environment. Not portraiture. We're not doing people shoots. This is strictly for a travel camera if you want to do some landscape shots with a bridge camera. Now these bridge cameras, of course, they're not like a DSLR. They have limitations. Most of them stop at F8. You know, most of them have, uh, I'd say all of them have limited shutter speeds. These are things you got to look at. And we're going to look at every one of these items. And then we're going to announce a winner or winners. We really don't know yet. But when we get back, and it's going to be over a couple of week duration. And we'll be testing all these out. We really want to give them a good test. And then be able to uh, report back to you guys on which ones I like the best. Now remember, this is my opinion. It's not anybody else's, it's not being uh, stinted or uh, advertised from a company. None of these cameras was given to me, not one. Every one of these cameras I own. So I wanna go out and test them all out and then see which one's the big dog out there. So hey, we'll see you in a little while. Now, well, one that surprised me the most was the Sony HX400V. It failed on me twice. Uh, what happened was, is I'd go to extend the lens out, and I think it's 50X or 60X, I'm not sure which one it was. And when I was out there, it would not retract. Then it wouldn't shut off. So I'd have to pull the battery out, put it back in, and then it would re, uh, redo its thing and fire back off. And so I took that one back to the store and just did a straight exchange, came back and continued the shoot. And what happened was I was out on my kayak 
and had it mounted on my Scotty mount system. And I went to turn it on and that one would not shut off. It just stayed on. And I mean, I'm hitting the off button and I'm doing the, the zoom retraction and all those kind of different things. And it malfunctioned again. That's the second camera, the second one. And I just said, you know, I, it fails based on mechanical failures. It just did not make it. Now, the unfortunate thing was the image saturation and quality was really good. So I, I'm not going to uh, say this is not a good camera to get. The image quality is outstanding on that, and I'm going to show you a few of them here. Uh, but the unfortunate thing was is that it mechanically failed, not on one camera, but on two of them. So it was taken out of the running. The next one that failed uh, was the Nikon, and that is the B700. And it failed strictly on image quality alone. The image quality was absolutely horrible. And then if you shot it in RAW, it gave you this special uh, suffix in their file, and then you had to buy a program to convert it. You know, that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, if you can shoot RAW, you should be able to import it into Lightroom or whatever uh, system you're using. Now, yes, I could import it into the Nikon system, but you can't batch process. You can't do any of those kind of things. But then when I zoomed in on the image quality, it was, it was like an oil painting. When I looked at the background, it looked like streaks instead of having a, a, a decent bokeh. It just didn't have it. So that one, <clears throat> out of here. So.